Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hub24 is an ASX-listed company with over $15 billion funds under management and one of the fastest-growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leaning managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. Megan Hodge. It is so great to have you on the XY podcast and to be recording in your hometown in Adelaide or Radelaide, I should say. So thank you for coming on. Oh, thanks for coming to visit us. I know. (laughs) It's our first. So obviously at the time of this recording, this will probably go out a little bit later, but uh, today is uh, day one of our Christmas party tour. So we are kicking things off in Adelaide and... The reception or the energy from our Adelaide XYers has been awesome. Like when we said we were coming, everyone got on the bandwagon and uh, yeah, the hype and the vibe has been so great because some of our most engaged and active advisors, just like yourself, hail from <laughs> well, South Australia. Well, everybody forgets Adelaide. <laughs> we're over here, guys. Oh, well, yeah. I love it. I love it. And, you know, this is my second trip to Adelaide. And both times, so the first time I thought, okay, maybe it's just a fluke, but it happened again this trip as well. And I'm like, okay, this solidifies it. You guys are some of the friendliest people in Australia. Oh. Like, I'm not even just saying that. Like, my Uber driver, (laughs) you know, the guys at the the pub where we had lunch last time, like, everyone is just so super friendly. So it just makes, yeah, I'm super excited to come back. So, yeah. Good. That's awesome. And how's everything in your world? Uh, Amazing. No. (laughs) A little crazy. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, Now, I've got a few sort of questions that will, you know, I'm sure we'll cover off. But Mm -hmm. my very first one is, why did you pivot from a career in uh, reality TV (laughs) to uh, go into advice? Because from the beautiful post I saw on Facebook, courtesy of... uh, Katrina? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Katrina. <laughs> yes. I, oh my God. Can you please just uh, tell me why you gave that up? <laughs> so, if you're referring to my primary school stint on the game show Wipeout, <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard. It was a high point in my life. It's really hard to find something else that will top that. Um, but no, I became an advisor. I was in a, um, I was working in a credit union. Yeah. And I was helping people, you know, just with like basic everyday banking stuff. And I met a financial planner. She came in and she said, I help people with money. Um, And I went, that sounds kind of cool. I'd love to do that. And then the rest was history. I found a job as a client services officer for a planner and learnt the ropes and did the study and... Yeah. For a planner in a bank or outside of a bank? No. So my first role was at uh, Whitaker McNaught in okay. Brisbane. Yep. So um, learned a lot from the guys there and just kept on going. And, and so I'm you- still here 12 years <sighs> later. Yeah, That's fantastic. And so you were with, you were with the same employer for, because for, for like, what, 10 years or so? No. So I worked in a couple of different firms. Yep. My um, partner was Defence, so we moved around a little bit. Yep. And, and I think, in a way, it was good. It gave me exposure to a larger financial planning practice, then some smaller practices. Um, and then about four or five years in, I said I would never go and work for a bank, right? So when you work in smaller financial planning practices, um, you're almost taught from everybody that, you know, bank planners, yeah, we don't talk We don't talk to them or they can't sit with us. And about four <laughs> years in, I did um, sell my soul a little bit and I joined um, a certain bank and I worked as a planner for them for nearly four years. And I have to say, I thought that when I went in there that um, I would – be selling my soul a little bit, but I went in and I met some of the most genuine planners that I am still really good friends with today. Mm-hmm. And for four years, I was still able to be the advisor I wanted to be. So I wasn't, I didn't have to um, forget about any of my own values or anything, but I did find at that four year point, it, 
it got to a point where I couldn't probably service the clients in the way that I wanted. Yeah. And I wanted to move away to a more flexible model. Yeah. Wow. Mm. That's really interesting. I guess you, yeah, still had that flexibility or freedom a little bit to kind of make it your own and learn. And I guess maybe you would have taken a lot of lessons away from that experience that you then implemented when you stepped out of the banking world, right? Yeah, absolutely. I feel, like, I feel like they're two quite different worlds, they're, right? Yeah, they're hugely different. So I think I found there were skills that I learned that I still use today in terms of building relationships with, um, so when you're in the bank, it's obviously building relationships with internal stakeholders, but then I was able to use that in the bigger, broader world, yeah. um, building those relationships, teaching people what a planner does and how they work. Yeah. Um, there were some days in the bank that they would send a client in to see you and they would sit in front of you and they'd say, I don't even know why I'm here. So you were basically like educating the client for the first 15 minutes on what a financial planner even was and oh what we did. God. Um, so I learned a lot of, lot of lessons. <laughs> totally. Um, but I have to just, I think in the end it was a corporate world mm. probably wasn't, wasn't for me. And it was that really demanding, it, it is just ultimately a sales environment. So yeah. 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 Well, that's what just came to mind when you said, you know, the clients have been almost steered in there Correct. and they're like, I don't know why I'm here. Like that is such a cold introduction Absolutely. to then, you know, so I think that would have been a really good lesson and challenge to really articulate mm. what an advisor is because we were having this conversation before we started recording mm. That, you know, I, the people that I speak to in my network and their, you know, their friends or relatives or whatnot, so many people just do not know what an advisor does. They don't understand the value they bring. Correct. Although I think we're starting to see a bit of a shift. It, it was like that for, for a while, or at least, you know, in, in my connections. And so, yeah, it's kind of gone from, I don't know what an advisor is. I asked a couple of people in my network a while ago, um, friends of mine, and I said, um, do you guys, you know, do you know what a financial advisor is? And my girlfriend said, is that an accountant? Mm. And I was like, I'm not <laughs> <Yes>. even surprised <laughs> that you just said that. So, yeah. and then I, yeah, because I still struggle to explain to people mm. what I do. Yeah. So I'm not an advisor, but I've, you know, run or managed this community of financial advisors and they're like, so, so what do you do? Yeah. Like, so I can just, I totally. I still, can. I have friends that are like, oh, you do taxes, right? Or you, you know, you do loans. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, not really. This yeah. is what I do. So, and I think that the challenge is that so many advisors work in different space, spaces with different specialties, I suppose. Mm. Um. So for me, it's about just educating clients on that, so what what to look for. Yes. So if, if you want a certain type of advice, what do you need to look for in an advisor? Yeah. What questions do you need to ask them to make sure that it's a good fit for you? Absolutely. Well, that's, yeah, that's where we're, like, I'm starting to see that shift. So it's move, starting to f move away from what the hell is an advisor mm. to, okay, at least some sort of grasp that, you know, they want to engage or find one, but then it opens up the questions of, like, well, how do I find the right one for me? Like, mm. what do I look for? And especially with everything coming out in the media with Royal Commission and everything like that, it's people are just probably more confused than anything. It's not Correct. that they don't. And I have this conversation with advisors in the community. I don't think it's that they're, they don't want to see an advisor mm. or they don't value what an advisor does. They just don't know. Like, they, they aren't informed or educated. And there's all this noise around everything with, you know, with institutions mm. and all of that coming out that, yeah, people are probably just more confused than ever. So that education piece, like you were just talking about, that so vital. isn't even necessarily saying to, you know, potential clients, like, come and talk to me. Like, mm. it's not a sell. Yeah. It's just, hey, you know, if you are going to look for an advisor, here is what you should ask. Absolutely. Like, go and ask these questions. So one of the main parts um, on our social media when we started, it was we – some, my sister wouldn't help me with my social media until I had a strategy, right? I had to have a point for why I was having a Facebook page. Now, hang on a second. Isn't your, <laughs> your sister's in social media, she right? She is. Yes, yeah, <laughs> correct. So she kind of knows a few things. And <laughs> I like that she's teaching <laughs> yes. you to fish, not giving you the fish, right? Exactly. Yeah. No, I've asked her so many times, will you manage my social media? <laughs> yeah. And she's just far too high level for that. Yep. Um, but she told me you need to have a strategy. And for us, one of those strategies was to humanise a financial planner. And I think I've always felt that people thought financial planners were six-year-old men that sit in suits in the, you know, tall office and um, really unapproachable and you couldn't go and see them unless you had hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest. 
And for me, breaking down that stigma is so important mm. so that people can see that financial plan, we are real, we are just real people. Yes. We've just taken an interest in this area that we can help them um, navigate. And I think that that's really important for me is to show that real side of you as a human to be a planner so that people can relate to you and go, actually, I feel like you're someone that I could open up to about something really private and personal. Absolutely. And that's the true gold of an advisor. Like, you know, all this tech and everything innovation is fantastic and I think it's going to do amazing things. It already is Mm. and it's only going to continue to grow and develop, um, you know, as we adapt and evolve um, in our businesses as advisors. But you just can't beat that human connection, that accountability. Like that's, I I see it happening all the time with advisors, you know, it's that who's going to keep you on track or who's going to have, who's going to be, you know, willing to ask the hard questions. Correct. Like an app or, you know, robo advice isn't going to sit there and say, hey, you know, is that, is it, oh, I don't even know an example off the top of my head, but um, ask those questions, be there as support or just an ear to listen, mm. right? Because you, you, you don't just wear an advisor hat, you wear a counsellor hat or a psychologist hat or a, you know, a mediator or all sorts of things. And, you know, the, and like you said, you're um, opening up to have some really private or asking for some really private information. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't just walk up to someone on the street and say, hey, do you want to get married? Like, yeah. <laughs> you need to build that relationship. You yeah. build that rapport. So, yeah, humanising it. I love mm. that. That's fantastic. And that totally comes through in your Facebook page, by the way. Like, oh, thanks. It's <laughs> having that brand. Like, it's always you. It's mm. a person. It's not just your wealthy life. It's M- Megan. Like, yeah. it's always your face, which I think is fantastic. And we're skipping ahead just a little bit because – I just want to backtrack a smidge because part of the reason I really wanted to have a chat to you is because I have watched your journey. Literally, I took screenshots of the Facebook posts <laughs> on the, air, the the flight to Adelaide this morning because I remember, and I have a bit of a crazy photographic memory. Adrian uh, tells me I have it all the time, or comments on it all the time. It's like I just have this weird ability to remember things, but I guess maybe I just remember really like important, valuable things. And I distinctly remember it was two years ago and you posted into the Facebook group asking, has anyone taken the leap? (laughs) Um, I'm looking at, you know, going out on my own and just want to understand, you know, highs and lows or, you know, everyone else's experiences and and a bunch of people commented on it, which was Mm. awesome. And then almost, almost kind of to the day, a year later, this subtle little post dropped in from you again to talk workflows and tracking because just went out on my own after 10 <laughs> years as an employed advisor, took the leap, and I was like, oh, my God. She and did it. <laughs> she did it. And I've, you've yeah. been going gangbusters ever since. Like, I've just watched the momentum go, and it's just been phenomenal. And we've been in touch multiple times, right? Like, yeah. And that was another reason why I was keen to chat because I know so many advisors who are where you are at now. Mm -hmm. So your wealthy life has just ticked over 12 months. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. (laughs) Yay. Happy birthday. And I know a bunch of advisors who are in a similar boat. They've ticked over one or two years. Um, They're about to start their own business. Shout out to Joshua Folletti in the Facebook group, who is also yeah, from Adelaide. Yeah, congrats. And just went live <laughs> with his business uh, two days ago. So there is so much in the, your journey mm-hmm. that I think there would be so many good nuggets that we could extract that would help others sort of considering going out on their own, who are out on their own, or just want to hear from someone else who's in the same boat, right? So yeah. going from employed to self-employed, was it anything like you thought it was going to be? Wow. Um, yes and no. Yes and no. So I spent a good 12 months contemplating um, the idea. So I was working in a practice where the idea was eventually that I would buy into that practice and I was quite comfortable with that idea. Um, although the longer I stayed, the longer I realised that we just really weren't on the same page around what we thought was important in an advice business. And so I just got to a point where I had, I did have incredible supporters around me. So I had people sending me clients. I had built some beautiful client relationships. And I just reached this point where I thought these clients are coming in into a business that isn't mine. And it, I didn't feel comfortable bringing them into that environment or proud of that environment. And so 
sort of 10 months, I was like, oh, how do you know when you're ready? Uh, I went to a workshop once around taking the leap. And I remember I put my hand up to ask a question about how do you know when you're ready? Like, you know, there's so many people that say, just do it. Like, you know, like, don't throw caution to the wind and just do it. And other people like, no, we're planners. We should have a plan and a structure. (laughs) And I put my hand up to ask the question and I cried because I was oh like, <laughs> clearly just so anxious about doing it. Um, and I actually talked to a client and a client said to me that sometimes you have to peer over the edge and you have to peer over the edge and you can't see a safety net, right? But you have to jump and you just have to trust that the safety net is there to catch you. Wow. And I kind of went, yeah, I think that's what I have to do. And I was listening every morning to... Uh, XY Advisor podcasts and YouTube <laughs> videos and everything. And I just got to a point where I went, I, I feel like I have to be brave and, and do this. So that's what I did. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is amazing. Mm. That's unreal. And so what did a lot go into the planning phase? Uh, probably like not bef- enough. Yeah. <laughs> probably not <laughs> enough. Um, I focused quite a bit at that point on what I wanted the world to feel like. Yep. So the name, the brand, um, Your Wealthy Life, I had pinpointed quite a few years ago because I wanted to start a financial literacy website. So to help educate clients around all things yeah, money. Unreal. Um, so I'd kind of earmarked that name. And then when I thought about a business, I kept thinking about all of these other names. I had this huge list and it just kept coming back to that. Um, and I loved that it was... Like for us, wealth isn't always just about money. Mm-hmm. It's about so much more and that was really important. Um, for it to be your was really important too, that it's the client's journey and it's not about us. Yes. Um, and I'd worked in practices before where it was all about the practice or all about the principle yeah. and I wanted it to be about the client. Yeah. So I probably put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, I put a lot of time into the branding. I did a really valuable empathy mapping session around the client experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for anyone going out on their own, I think that was really valuable. I still come back to that all the time around does this sit with the way that we want the experience to be Yeah. for our clients. But other than that, I probably didn't do too much more planning. I just kind of, um, I just jumped. Did you, I love that. Did you have an idea of what your ideal client, like who's your ideal client? Or has that changed over time? It, It has slightly changed in the 12 months. And I have to admit, everybody says you need to work out your ideal client. Yeah. But I think for those people that are just starting out, that you need to not be ashamed that at the start, you don't, you mightn't have an ideal client. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm ashamed to admit that, that you just, you take what is given to you. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously there'll be clients that you meet and you go, I can't add value so that they don't become a client of your practice, but you, you can't be too picky and choosy in those early days. So I think we're still really navigating what that looks like because we've got some really great referral partners. So some accountants that will send us quite a lot of retiree clients that we still work with. Yeah. Um, But obviously my joy factor comes in that sort of 30 and thriving category where they're just really starting to ask questions around money and wanting to be an adult. Yeah. And I say that's perfect. Come and see me. We'll get you adulting all over the place and you can sort of tick those boxes. That's cool because that that definitely was raised – when we had our Nail Your Niche event mm. um, last year, I believe, in Melbourne. And it was, yeah, it's that, you know, uh, concept of, yes, you know, niching is like it's, everyone's talking about that and really drilling down and you can really um, do a lot for that target market of your own. But when you are starting out, it's really difficult to say no to Correct. new business, right? And, and yeah, and, and not just take on, take on whatever, but I – even though you don't have a specific prescribed niche, it sounds like you're still a little selective in just who you know you can deliver value to. Oh, 100%. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think one of the joys in having your own business as well is that you can work with the clients that you enjoy working with. Yes. So you want to be excited about seeing them and you don't want those people that um, you don't enjoy spending an hour, an hour and a half sitting there talking yes. to. So that is one of the benefits of having your own business. Oh, that's so good. I love it. I love it. And so, yeah, you're 12 months in. So mm. you've just got Katrina. You've got one yes. as part of the team. Yeah. 
And then any any outsourcing or no? Uh, we outsource plans. Yes, and we have I have from the start. So I did the first six or seven months on my own. Yep, and holy moly, <laughs> it was so <laughs> hard. And I actually felt really bad for all the times where I had taken for granted the help that I had. Yep. So even just calling Superfunds and getting information or chasing things down. Um, I remember there was just this one specific day where I had to go to the post office to collect something and I just went, well, I really am wearing all the hats here. Like I'm responsible for all the things. Yeah. And I think that's probably the part where it said, where you asked, like, was I prepared? Yeah. That was probably the part I underestimated a lot was yes. that, yeah, you're responsible for everything. Wow. So um, there was a post in the group and I can't remember exactly who posted it, but it was around going out on your own um, and just, did anyone regret it or, you know, is it the best decision ever? And Jodie Douglas, shout out, <laughs> in the Gold Coast, she commented and said, um, she goes, it is crazy, it's the hardest thing ever, but it's the most rewarding thing. She goes, I actually went back to my employer and apologised. Yes. <laughs> For taking it for granted, and I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, she yeah she goes it's yeah it, it's a roller coaster hundred percent, but it's the best roller coaster you'll take. So it's yeah that that really stuck out to me, which was really cool. So has there been anything that's um, worked in your journey so far that you didn't think would, or vice versa, anything that you thought would work in terms of like growing the business or client acquisition or anything like that that worked that you didn't think would work? Uh, I think I was really um, happy with the people that said they were going to support me did support me. Yeah. And I think that was incredible, almost to the point where I pretty much fell over in those first few months. I think I really underestimated. I changed licensees mm. and I really underestimated in doing all the things but also learning the new licensee standards and the way that they did things was different. Yep. And I think I thought, oh, well, I've been exposed to a few different licensees in the past. I'm really, compliance was really important to me. I thought I would have no issues. Um, and obviously I I came, I moved across in the middle of, you know, what is the fallout from the Royal Commission as well. Mm -hmm. So compliance obviously was very heavy. Mm. And so I really underestimated that. Yep. Um, but, yeah, people were still really supportive and were still sending me lots of clients to see. So that part really worked well. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah. So I guess the main thing, like the thing that I, from, you know, being in the community and chatting to advisors all the time and from what I see is that they, the one thing they love more than anything is just hearing from other advisors, mm. especially after 2019, right? We're about to round out arguably one of the toughest years in the industry. I know I haven't been around for eons, but it has, like, we can't shy away from the fact that it's been a really rough year. We're in this crazy transition phase and advisors are reaching out to me and I'm having so many conversations where they're just, yeah, they're really feeling like they're being pulled through the mud mm. and they're like, am I the only one that's going? Like, they know they're not, but they're just, they feel so isolated and, Yes, so one of the biggest shifts or unexpected roadblocks for you was a change of licensee, which was probably mm. a bit unexpected, right? And I remember, and this is just a testament to the XY community, was you reaching out to me, shot me a message, and you're like, hey, can we catch up on Zoom? I said, yeah, for sure. And so it was a Friday afternoon, and then we jumped on Zoom at like 4 o'clock, and then you were like, so... I'm going to change licensees. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I think we chatted for an hour, hour and a half. And it was just that it was rough because it was so unexpected. But yeah. it was also like I, to me, I was like so humbled by the fact that you felt comfortable enough to just let loose and open up and vent and go, oh, my God. And then it was like, okay. But then straight away after we got through the first half an hour of like, you know, just all of the feels, you were like, okay, I can't dwell on it. I want to be solutions focused. Mm. So the first thing I'm doing is reaching out to you because you are one of the most connected people in this community. So <laughs> yes. can you help point me in the right direction? And I 
that floored me because I was just like, wow. But it's, it is. It's a testament to the community. And one of our superpowers as a collective is being able to connect people. And that's something that I've been doing a lot lately. So I've got like, there's literally a handful of advisors who are going through everything you've are going through mm. or had gone through. Um, and so being able to connect them to people like yourself to just have a conversation, you know, like what like what you and I did, yeah. just to, you know, get it all out and then go, okay, now how can we implement action Correct. and get through this? So I didn't, in the 10 months before I even started my business, I had people that I would call weekly to yeah. like talk through my idea, like when am I going to do it, what's, you know, so I had so much support then. Then I started the business and, yeah, the first however seven months was so, so hard yeah. and I was going through a pre-vet program so I wasn't actually able to deliver advice to clients and I would spend like so many nights just crying because I thought, what the heck have I done? What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, what am I doing? Who thought this was a good idea? I like... <laughs> Um, so I really struggled then. I, w- I would reach out to a lot of people just to just to say, like, tell me this is going to be okay. Mm. And so when then I got the news that my licensee was closing and I needed to find a new home, I think I just was – I say to people now, I must really want this because the fact that I've just persisted mm-hmm. despite all of these, I guess, perceived roadblocks mm-hmm. – um, I really, I really must want this, and I do. I do really want it, and I think that that's deep down in everything. I've had all these things that potentially could be signs to say, oh, you know, you need to. With the licensee closing, obviously, people started reaching out saying, let's look at mergers or acquisitions, and let's do this. And honestly, the whole time I've just had in deep down in my gut, even though there's days I doubt myself, I just know that it will work Mm -hmm. and I do believe that there's a place in this world for uh, good people that believe in good advice and I think if you can sit with that with yourself and know that deep down you're going to make this work, you know, good things will happen. Totally. Like not lose the faith, I suppose. <laughs> but it's okay to It's have totally those okay to cry, guys. It's <laughs> totally okay to cry. Um, you can sit in your pantry <laughs> and cry in your pantry because there's snacks there. Um, but yeah, I think that that's, you know, there were times when I was going through pre vet where I, I really wanted to give up, like I, so many times. And I thought, I was one of those people that when the Royal Commission came out, I was super positive and I thought, we need this. I really want this shake-up in the industry. I want to get rid of the cowboys and I really just want good, honest people in advice. And, you know, we all know now that it, it doesn't even matter who you are, that you're subject to the fallout from it. And I felt like my integrity was being questioned and the ability to actually just help people was being, you know, destroyed. And so I... I have had nights where I'm like, oh, do I do I want to be in this industry now, like the way that it is? Um, and then I kind of flick back and I'm like, no, because if if I'm not here and my business isn't here, you know, who, who are the clients going to see and who's going to help them? It sounds very all like, no, <laughs> you know, it's so true. Like saviour, I'm going to, I'm here to save the world. But, you know, I think you just, you have to, you can't lose faith in what you do and believe in what you do. And I think the second that you do, it probably is worth looking at a change in industry. Absolutely. And not all superheroes wear capes. No, true. <laughs> <laughs> Some days I wear one. <laughs> Aside with all those, yeah. so, you know, all the different hats that you wear. Yeah, correct. Put on different capes and whatnot. Oh, but it is it is so true. Like you're – and and the thing is, like, no, no matter how, like, low you can feel or you have those days, your clients love you. Mm. Like – they are championing everything that you guys do for them and I see it, you know, and uh, like, and I've said this on so many occasions, I would love to shine a public light or just open up the Facebook group and let the public be able to see the conversations mm-hmm. and discussions that go on in there because they would see just how much you advisors, like, are dedicated. And, we care. Yeah, yeah. you and care. I, yeah, and I like, think that's that part of showing people that you're a human and that you you do care. Um, I think one of the points once I said to someone was about 
you know, having been quite a young advisor and a female in advice, I when I initially started, I thought I was just going to deal in the risk space and it was something that I understood and I was comfortable with. But I also think now looking back, I was scared of speaking to people older than me and talking to them about retirement planning. And when I started, I couldn't believe that these people who had twice, three times as much life experience as me were saying, Megan, this is our life savings. Can you tell us what to do with it? Because we're about to retire. And I think if you're not humbled by that, then I don't think you should be in the industry because that's they are taking their world and saying to you, what should I do? And putting so much trust and faith into you Yes, that, of course, we have to care. Like, Of course. So how did you feel when that happened the first time? You're like, <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like ever since I do, I go above and beyond and probably research things way too much. But it's a huge, it is a huge responsibility. It and is. And I think I don't take it lightly as, a, you know, the whole community, we don't. No. And that's what I love is that we all support each other. People can ask questions and that there's someone there to, to help, you know, work out a problem. And then we're all sort of like, fighting the same fight, which is being there for our clients. Oh, totally. T- uh, totally. Totally. The, um, yeah, it's, we're, I was having this conversation um, today, literally just a few hours ago. Um, it's really cool to see that all of you guys in the community are, if we really want to get down to the nitty gritty, are in competition to a degree. And some even have the same sort of target niches, yet the word competition is like irrelevant. It's, it's gone. It's, it's gone. not even spoken. It's gone and it's been replaced with collaboration. Mm-hmm. And that's been the cool thing. So that clients that, you know, you're able to help your clients um, and, and like leveraging the, 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 the knowledge pool of, um, you know, experiences and, and ideas and, and, and advice in, in the, within the community to help each other's clients. Like it's just phenomenal. And I guess the, as that goes on in time, like I really, you know, you were saying that you really got to remind yourself that I want to be here even mm. when you have those terrible times. Like for me, it's I just I, I really uh, remind myself that or really focus on that um, like the big, my, one of my big visions is really moving the needle on changing the public perception mm-hmm. of advice. And so highlighting all of the stuff that you guys do, um, and really, yeah, being able to have that platform so that everyone can uh, work together to deliver greater value to clients. Like that is what is going to change that needle so that in oh, yeah. time it'll just, you know, having an advisor will just be, it'll just be a standard or it, you know, it becomes, it just becomes a norm. Like you have an accountant and people understand, but they also value the work that you guys do because it, it is, in, like you said, it's, it's, it's life changing. Like people have worked their lives or, you know, or even people who are just starting out, like you are able to help them get set up in from, you know, set the right foundations. Correct. Like they're, you know, the, 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 their, their, um, life from there on is, vastly different, like vastly impacted versus if they didn't have someone in their corner to champion, you know, all of that. So, yeah, that's my little rant. But um, but it's so true. Let me just step off my soapbox. Yes, let me get off my virtual soapbox. (laughs) But but it is true because I and I, I see it and I go, oh, my God, like, I want to share this with the world because, yeah, I'm the lucky one who gets to enjoy it all and, and see the value and I just want everyone else to as well. So. I think I think the important thing as well is our XY community wasn't here when I was coming up the ranks through being a, a planner and I worked in practices where, you know, I felt like I was never going to get a shot at advice or I was learning from the wrong people about what advice was and what it looked like and – So it's so incredible now. I am so happy that there's this space where we can try and give back to people that are coming into advice now and and show them that this this is what real advice is and what's, you know, the conversations that are important and the questions. I don't even know how many PD days you've gone to where it's just, a, it is, it's a product mm-hmm. flog. And I think why are we not talking about behavioural um, stuff around clients? What What are the best questions that you can be asking a client to get them to open up more? So I think the community is incredibly valuable for that. Mm. And I also thought before I came into the community, I felt like nobody thought like me. 
I thought it was like really unique because I couldn't find people around me that, that, that had the same thoughts. And, you know, I've gone and, and started my own business now, but there's probably five or six people already that I'm like, oh, I could have totally just joined your business. We think exactly the same way. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, we have this ability now to be able to share that and connect with other people and not necessarily have to do it on our own if we don't want to. Absolutely. Mm. It's, yeah, it's a really powerful thing to see and be a part of and yeah it's again like you know as you're very humbled with all the stuff you do with your clients for me it's the same thing with the community like it's just really special thing to be a part of so I guess in terms of growth because you were just talking about um you know uh, helping each other uh in terms of like professional development Mm. um is there anything that you like do you know in terms of like the behavioral stuff for for clients or what is what is growing and learning and developing look like for you alongside the business um so at the moment all of my growth and learning is related (laughs) I'm like learning all things fascia (laughs) (laughs) um but no outside of that like I have found it quite valuable to connect with people outside of my industry so I think there's certain skills that are across all business units. So I've put myself in a mentor group with other business owners across different industries. And that gives me this ability once a month to talk to people about how they're running um, their business, Mm. um, which obviously helps me on the business owner side of things. And then from a financial planner perspective, my friends list of financial planners is is huge. And so I'm just constantly on the phone to different people talking through different things. How would you handle this? What would you do in this scenario? Um, Just sort of sharing. And so the get together with other business owners, does that, has that helped in developing referral relationships or how do they come about? Because you said that you have some good relationships with accountants. Yes. So did that come from that or how did you source those referrals? Because I know that's a massive topic that everyone goes... How do you do it? Where are my clients going to come from? Yes. So the relationship part, I was actually really fortunate. I was part of a referral networking group and I've made lifelong friends from that. So we meet every week and we're there to actively refer to each other's business. That's been really helpful for me. The... I'm involved in quite a few communities. I'm on the um, AFA Inspire Committee and I just like meeting new people. And I think if you can go out and meet new people and you're you're invested in their growth, it just naturally brings client referrals. So if you go into – I think if you go into situations expecting something or wanting something in return – Mm -hmm. It's never going to end well. Mm -hmm. But if you can go in and go, how can I help you? What can I do for you and your business? Um, It just, they, I don't know, you just connect with people and then they say, hey, I know. I like my one of my accountants refers me and goes, oh, Megan, um, she's a financial planner, but she's an awesome one. (laughs) Like, (laughs) that is the best bio. Thank you so much. So, yeah. And, but again, it's like nurturing relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So when I first came into XY, and looking back, because I've been involved for two and a bit years now, and hindsight's a beautiful thing. And I feel like I was um, probably a bit naive, but I think it worked to my advantage because it literally took me 12, 12 months, maybe a bit more, like in reflecting and looking back, it probably took me about that time to really build up trust and rapport with advisors in the community and people mm-hmm. in the community because it was I was new I was this new person and sure I'm pretty nice like you know I like try to be really nice but you just you need time to develop those relationships and it did it really took me a good chunk to sort of have that level of I guess uh, have that level of respect mm. from people in the community and I you know I can't blame them for that because yeah, it's it's you need to nurture those relationships. So, um, and, and that's like that with anything in life, friendships, you know, um, relationships, referrers. Like you can't just oh, you can't meet someone once and then think, oh, they're going to send referrals to me. Yeah, it just doesn't work like totally, that. Totally, yeah. totally. Well, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. So. I know uh, we've been chatting for a while and I feel like I could just chat all day (laughs) and we'll have to continue this at the Christmas party. Yes. But I would love to know what you think the future of advice looks like. Okay, where, what you, or or you can even tie this into sort of a joint kind of question or Mm -hmm. what would you like to see or where would you like to see advice go? Oh, that is a good question. Mm. Uh, I, 
I think like you, I think changing the public perception is really important. I would like to see advice move to a point where the compliance burden is not so much that you can't help everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think I really worry that with the changes that are happening at the moment, the focus will move back to you can only deal with high net wealth clients and you have to charge X amount of dollars. And I think if that's your target market, that's fine. But my concern is for the everyday Australians that aren't learning financial literacy skills at school or university and they're getting shafted along the way around different money things, my concern is that we're going to lose the ability to give advice to those people. Mm -hmm. So my hope for the industry is that that they will see some sense and they will start to say, you know, we have to be able to deliver advice to these people at a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, that's my hope for the future of the industry. Uh, I also hope that, you know, practices like mine will have a chance to succeed. And I think that there's been there's very successful practices out there that were built in a different time. And I just really hope that today's environment will encourage more of that growth as well. I don't want to see people not living their dreams just because the environment makes it really difficult for yep. them to do that at, at the moment. Totally. Love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. No it's worries. Been great to Thanks chat. for coming to Rattle No problem. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, first uh, Christmas party tour event tonight. And unless, uh, in case anyone couldn't tell, I. Um, very fitting, lost my voice, almost lost my voice yesterday. So I haven't even kicked off the tour yet and I already couldn't speak. So I'm glad I was able to get through this conversation. So yes, thank you so much for coming on. It's been great to great to chat. I hope uh, many advisors out there got something out of it, which I'm sure they will. And um, yeah, we'll chat soon. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. <laughs>